I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Welcome to the Social Hour, a Batman on Film podcast, batman-on-film.com. I am the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Ramey. Let's ride! And today I'm riding with senior BF contributor, Ryan Lauer. Ryan, how are you, sir? In the spirit of Peter Vera. <laughs> Yeah, I think gotta, gotta really get gotta really get down there for Pete. What's up? He's got what's up? What's up? What's up? Okay. Um, yeah, it's going well. Yeah, it's going well, Bill. We're getting some fall weather in Indiana. I have okay. turned into an elderly, uh, not elderly. No, I'm 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 aging. I'm getting up there because I'm enjoying talking about the weather. That is becoming a a topic in my day to day life. Like, oh, that weather today. Oh, that weather. Yeah. Because it's yeah. it's October. I love the fall. I love Halloween. I look forward to when I can start regularly wearing hoodies. And it has been unseasonably warm. And by warm, I mean like you know mid upper seventies constantly uh, here. And finally, it's kind of been dipping a little bit. Next week we've got some highs in like the mid fifties coming our way, and I'm looking at oh, my. Oh wow! Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking in my closet, my hoodies. So, you know, like which ones will be chosen? Yeah. I'll wear you on Tuesday. You're coming Wednesday. You know, so it's it's good. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah. It's also Halloween season, so I got to watch the long Halloween. You know. Yeah, I, I apparently I think I've been elderly for most of my <laughs> life because I've always liked to talk about weather for some reason. Um, I mean, I'm one of those who could put on the Weather Channel and watch it for an hour. Just oh my watch goodness! It, you know, Especially well, this week would be different yeah. with the hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, hurricane coverage. Yeah. Shout but, out to the BOFers in Florida, man. I I've been yeah. through hurricanes. Yeah, where I I grew up in Southeast Texas near the coast, been through several. Um, yeah, that's and then again, I, I think double. There was a one-two punch. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like in a week's time, got two of them or so. Two weeks' yeah. time, yeah. I don't know. It seems really quick. I'm like, what's Damn. crazy is that the 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 one that went in went came in a couple weeks ago or whatever it was, the one that mm-hmm. just like went up through Georgia and South Carolina and North yeah. Carolina and just devastated. I mean, that's places that's inland, man. And yeah. you get that kind of damage. I got a buddy. That's wild. Who lives in South Carolina? I mean, he lives in South Carolina, away from the coast, up toward uh, near, closer to North Carolina. And he sent me pictures. I said, How, "How'd you, you know?" He goes, "Like it looked like a bomb went off, you know." And he goes, "You know, he grew up the same place with me." And he's like, "It's like being back home." And I live, you know, it's not like I live in Charleston, South Carolina, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's it's what funny is, that you mentioned that because I actually have I have a really good friend that lives in uh, South Carolina, and we like I'd I'd seen stuff about like you just said uh, like North Carolina and uh, Georgia, and so I I messaged him was like hey are you all right in South Carolina he's like yeah nothing like n- nothing happened to him he's he's like a half hour from the the coast even and stuff and yeah it, it was further was fine. yeah that's I was like damn that was that's what was crazy wild it, it came <laughs> in and you know it, up through. Mm-hmm. Georgia, tennis, you know, Eastern yeah. Tennessee and Western South Carolina. I mean, it's dang, crazy, crazy. Nuts. Um, and here it, I'm like, it, yeah, where's my affect- chilly weather for my hoodies? <laughs> yeah. It affected Haas. Like he was in Tennessee. Yeah. 
Yeah. I hit him. Yeah, I hit he texted, him up. And, yeah. Texted us. Yeah. So, all right. Absolute Batman. Oh, hey. And we're Let's not talk talking about, about the absolute editions. We're talking no. about the new absolute Batman. Yes. This is the Scott Snyder, Nick Dragota, Frank Martin production. Of course, Scott Snyder's Nick, writer. Tr- Nick Dragota, have you are you familiar with him? Not honestly, no, and not until now. Yeah, I'm not either. Yep. I'm not either until now. And it's one of those things of like now I I need to go back and look because it's not like he's someone, you know, like yeah. a 22 year old fresh out of art school or anything. He's I think he's got a he's got a career. Um but like, yeah, I'm unfamiliar. I want to go back and look and see all the things that he's done. And like, cause sometimes that does happen where you go back and you're looking like, Holy shit. I actually, I read something by this guy a long time ago. I, you know, seen that this yeah. guy did this issue that I'd seen. And it was just, the name just went right over my head. Well, we know Scott Snyder. Oh, our old yeah, friend I've heard of him. Mm-hmm. Um, had a, a long run on Batman mm-hmm. was on detective before that. Mm-hmm. Uh, wrote a classic, detective story with uh, Dick Grayson as Batman in it. Art, in my mind, yeah, that's his best Batman stuff. It's that my favorite. Good. Yeah, It's my favorite. Um, not to discredit, because obviously Court of Vowels became an, a bit of an instant classic, and people love Court of Vowels. Yeah. He, did, he did Death of the Family, which is one of my favorite Joker stories. So the guy's, you know, he's pretty good, Bill. Yeah. He's pretty good. I would say three fourth of his run on Batman I liked. Mm-hmm. I mean the quarter out. I mean he'll he'll go down. I'm sure in Batman history as being the creator of one of a of a great set of. I want to yeah. say Batman villain, but it, we're talking plural. The Court of Owls. Yeah, it's already uh, seeped its way into other Batman media besides comics, and you know. Um, I wouldn't shock me if we see it in a live action film one day. Yeah. Same. So yeah, I would give that, you know, that's that it would be it's a classic, classic for that. He he, he did the uh all star all star Batman. Yeah. In uh Rebirth. That's actually how I started writing for BOF is because um I took over reviewing issues for you on that book. And that one's not really talked about that much. And I think that's a fun series. It's like 14, 15 issues overall, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that was a pretty good series that he wrote yeah. and had a ver- you know a variety of artists on that one. That was pretty good. There are ju- there are some um, there are some things that that didn't jive with me that he came <laughs> that we're not fans of that he's done. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, I got to be fair here, uh, yep. but I still think he's great. Yep. Um, still really good. So he's kind of like. With this absolute universe, I think he's kind of like one of the creative bosses. Yeah. If you will. And he is writing absolute Batman. All in. This I whole all in initiative. I still haven't figured out what that is, but whatever. Um, so this is where Pete would be a good one to yeah. chime in because I read that all in special that came out. The first Tuesday of this month. I did. And that too. is supposed to kind of set the stage for like, because if you'll see the DC uh, ongoing series starting this month, I'll say all in, you know? Yes. And yeah. this absolute Batman soon, absolute Wonder Woman and absolute Superman. I think they also stem from they're hinted at in the all in issue. Yeah. Which one of your favorite DC characters, Uxus, you know, he's all over that all in issue. See, um, I didn't, I, I guess I, I, don't, I was lost. I, I didn't understand. get, I didn't, yes. I didn't get any of it. Yep. Yeah. And you that's know? where it's like Pete break it down for me because in which I talked to him the other night on the phone, he said something about like, it's almost like the birth of the dark multiverse. And I'm like, I've, I'm multiversed out. Okay. Yeah. And then also I thought there already was a dark multiverse. And so it's just like, okay, I can just chalk it up to the fact of like, that's not my, usually my area that I explore I'm in that stuff. So I don't necessarily get it, but I guess if somebody wants a little bit of a stage setter, I guess you can read that all in special. Didn't do much for me. It no. didn't affect me reading this absolute Batman 
yeah in any way whatsoever so yeah i i think absolute <clears throat> batman well for me it just kind of stands on its own i don't need a yeah i don't need to know how how or why or when this universe came to be you yeah know what i'm saying me neither yeah okay, just jump so, in yeah um what was your thoughts when this when this was announced okay and we got, you know, a kind of a synopsis of what it was going to be about. What what was your what was your thoughts? I mean, what, what, what was you know? How did you, you think? I think I was, I was like, eh, yeah. to be honest. And I always try to make sure to set myself, not set myself, but to not give some kind of strong reaction and be, you know, and overreact because I also think that it's human nature as you get older new things start coming out and you're like you start to lean more towards the old way of 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 things so the fact of something being announced and it's it's a new batman and it's like eh, okay <clears throat> as more specifics on it came out and the like i wasn't even turned away from the look the, like that's the what first got image. most of the that my, most of the hullabaloo was over the look, you know. He was big. big. I like big. my. I really. I, I like my. I like my Batman. Like, not slim, but just like trimmed. I don't know. I don't need him to be some hulking mass. Yeah. You go live action. I like Christian Bale and Pattinson more so than Affleck's jacked mm -hmm. figure you know and mm -hmm. that kind of was because sometimes i get a little carried away with it in comics but also i kind of don't care either i'm like does he look kind of cool it's like oh, okay so this image looked cool but then it was saying of like he's got like the the constant sell to me was you're that you kept seeing it was like there's no money there's no mansion there's no butler and stuff and i was just mm -hmm. kind of like well we don't even get that stuff in the legacy comics right now like those are things that like a comfortable batman story to me is what we know with batman you know mm -hmm. His history mm -hmm. of what of Bruce, what happened to Bruce Wayne's parents, the birth of Batman, the mansion, the butler, that's Batman. And that doesn't change like him and what he does. And so then I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't all in on the announcement. Um, the Scott Snyder thing, it intrigued me. I kind of thought in a sense of like, OK, if rightfully so, DC Comics, they need a shot in the arm. Hey, Scott Snyder obviously did really good work for the company. Mm -hmm. Probably not a blank check, but a very like many zeros in the check. Who wouldn't say, yeah, I'll write a Batman story. Like I'll jump back into the Batman and rightfully mm -hmm. so, because it got, pe it, I think awareness is half the battle. And I think if you're into DC comics, you are definitely aware that this comic was coming and that this comic's mm -hmm. out. So that's, you know, all of that makes total sense. Um, so that's, yeah, I, I don't want to take over the, the whole thing, but leading up to it, I wasn't, I wasn't excited about it. Um, I didn't love what was being teased. I, I am oh trying to not over exaggerate, but I think that the bat symbol for this is one of the worst I've seen in Batman. <laughs> Like, I don't like this bat symbol in any way whatsoever. Okay. And that's completely nerdy. It's nitpicky. It's small. And we can get into specifics about the bat symbol, which we yeah. will. So just like going into it, I wasn't going into it, going to read it, going to hate read it or anything like that. Um, but that was just me leading up to it. It was pretty much like, ugh, I'm not like sold on this. I, I am. Um, I like Batman a certain way. I'm sure mm -hmm. you can say anybody, well, you know, everybody can say, yeah, that. they have their preference. And, you know, to me, Batman is, you know, parents killed in front of him, wealthy mm -hmm. family, uh, Alfred, you know, um, becomes Batman, the whole, you know, I shall become a bat fights street level crime, relatively realistic and, uh, is mainly solo without sidekicks mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, but even with that, you know, even with a Robin, that's still traditional Batman to, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So anything that veers outside of that, I tend to go, you know, really? What, you know, all we have to do that? 
Yeah. But if you're going to do something like this, you got to do, I mean, it's got to be a little different, you mm -hmm. know? So that was my fear. It was going to be so foreign to me, like, um, not, not to, no, no, I'm not putting this down, but like when they did the Stan Lee, re, uh, Stan Lee reimagines mm -hmm. uh, DC comics, you know, DC characters. And then there's, you know, the Batman one that, that was, that's a little too much change for me, even though it's that's okay. Dark Claw, wasn't it? I think I have that issue. Well, that was it. Here, that, no, that's the um, that's amalgam, a different one. amalgamation. What was it? Um, Amalgam. Oh, okay. Amalgam. That D, that DC Marvel smash up that was Dark Claw. Oh, they, that's not. Yeah, they uh, combined okay. Wolverine and Batman. That's right. Okay, they're different. This things. was, um, I, and I wrote uh, Michael Usland did a updated. That's right. Yeah, version of that not long ago, and I got the interview for him for that for D, with DC, and then I wrote a review. I, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Um. But that was like, I mean, that's like a completely different, everything's sure. very different, different, different person is Batman and whatnot. So, but I was going to read this, obviously, which I did, and I'm going to re I'm reviewing it for Batman on film. And I'll say that, you know, when it became available for us to read early, thank you to DC Comics, mm -hmm. um, I read it and I was pleasantly surprised how much I liked it because with all the little tweaks and I wrote my review, I said, you know, kind of, it's like an absolute Batman day is night, black is white in is out, you know, any of those you want to come up with at the end of the day, bottom line with the Batman character, it was very Batman at its core. And so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, hell, I gave it an A. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm kind of, uh, I, I've, I go, okay, this is, this, this is the absolute Batman. It's not what I would want. Like if they made a movie, you know, like that many changes in bat, the Batman mythos in a film or anything like that. But in this comic book form, yeah, I'm I'm kind of on board with this, and I'm looking forward to seeing what 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 plays out. It's familiar, but but um, foreign at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you and I talked about about this, I'd said I was conflicted, and I said that if we talk about it. I'm like I'm not. There is well, one. I don't think that there's much interest in just completely coming on and and dumping on something um for a listener and for me i i have better use of my time than let's spend a long time talking about something that i don't like doesn't doesn't sound appealing to me as i'm conflicted though because like i do think that the issue period is very well constructed i'd argue mm -hmm. that it is good Mm -hmm. I think that the artist like it did a really good job. I think mm -hmm. Scott Snyder makes everything connect and like make sense. So it's like, okay, that's what's, what's my issue. And I kind of narrowed it down to, to two things. Like one, I think I started to get bugged by the lead up to, and then even in reading it, cause it did, it almost felt a little too like, yeah, look how, look how badass we are with this absolute Batman. And when something starts to do that, puff a chest a little bit, it, like it, it's a turnoff for me and like almost makes me start to nitpick it unfairly. And I just kind of felt like, and there's some comic, I can't remember what some comic book shop I'd seen online, like a big one too. That was even being like, that was saying the no mansion, no money no butler like that was their big self like yeah. yeah look how badass we're taking these elements that you know with batman we're taking them away and i'm like well if you're taking away elements of batman that we like why is that your selling point like you're yeah. taking away things that we like that's not to me that's counterproductive and then i think some certain moments in the issue felt like yeah look how crazy and cool badass and i'm I, like i'm a little like i really was like Ugh. okay now try to scoot that aside what's another issue I kind of, by the end, I don't feel, a, I feel a little sense of almost like 
we've gotten this in a way before, like with the Earth One line. And that was Ooh. Ryan Haas that he he I was trying to figure it out and he'd read it and he brought that point up. So I'm not going to take credit for it. He just said of Earth One, it felt like Earth One did this and did it better. And I, I think that that's what I was looking for to help explain. Um, and, and like, I didn't have a sense of caring a whole lot either by issues end. And I'm like, this is issue one. This was a hard, kind of a harder sell for me to jump on board with this anyway, that I'm going to keep reading it though, because the, the opening page does say that this is part one of five. I don't know Mm -hmm. if absolute Batman is only five issues or if this arc is only five issues and then it's going to go into another arc. I'm, I have no idea. So that said, it's like, I'm going to keep reading at least maybe it will grow on me. Maybe after I distance myself and accept of like what it is that I might be more open to it. I maybe, maybe I won't be. And that's fine too. But I think I, I will need to judge it on what it is rather than like, um, my bugaboos about it per se. Yeah. But I, it, then again, I can like, if, if it bought things bother me with it, I'm not saying it ruined my day, Bill, it ruined my day. Um, things that I just don't necessarily enjoy about it. And that's fine too. I just, I'm, I'm just, that's where, there you go. I'm, I stand by, I'm conflicted with it. Okay. Well, we have a special <laughs> guest. We do. Join us now. Get out of here. In pockets himself. No way. Old Boudin pockets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. He's, he's going to come in. Back. All, the way, <laughs> all the way from New Jersey. Larry. <laughs> Pete Vera joined the show. It. Where is he? Nobody told me they were recording there we at go. sunrise, so I woke up. Nah. nah, I think I, I think I let you know, Pete. You never told yeah. me a time. I assume yeah. it was 10 o'clock normal Bill Ramey podcast time for me. Oh, man, I really would hate for there to be a paper trail no one told me it. or text trail. And I'm pretty sure. Damn, I thought I said nine. There I'll we go. The text. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. I'll find the text. So wrong about this. Wrong about hush. What else are you guys wrong about? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Don't no, y'all are wrong. The, the hush. Uh, y'all. No, no. I'm the one yeah. who's right about hush. Now, you okay. We just from right about hush. I, I'm 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent right. You've let ga- you've let DC gaslight you so much that it's a classic that you've come to believe it. Now. We're talking to Absolute Jeez, Batman, it's not not Hush. Absolute Batman. And so we've kind of just started, Pete. So the oh, question okay. is, okay, the question is, what did you think of the premise of Absolute Batman when you heard when it was announced? Just the what they, the information they gave us, the premise and whatnot. Uh, from what I gathered, it was uh, just some sort of Reimaging, reimagination of of Batman. Okay, that's what I got. And were you intrigued or already? Go, I mean, going in and like, nah, this is not for me. I probably not actually like when I first heard about it and I saw the size of the character, I original and then they showed me a, 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 a I think it was the artist's uh, original rendition of the character, and then he put a size comparison next to a, a normal person. I thought it was a guy in like a robot suit again because <laughs> it just the, the Batman seemed so big that I thought it was like I, I said it was on a show with you and Javi. I was like, this is just a guy in a suit. And you're like, yeah, it is. I was like, no, no, no I'm in like a guy in like a big robot Gordon robot uh, Robocop suit. Like, that's what I thought it was. So um, I was wrong about that, but um, he is a big boy. <laughs> well, he's 6'6. Six, six. He's, so a, he's a big man. Scott Snyder said, Physically, yes, that they made him. He is intended to be the biggest Bruce Wayne, because this is Bruce Wayne now. So we haven't made. Let's be clear for everybody: this is Bruce Wayne, and we haven't gotten to the details. Uh, apparently, really. that's Bruce Wayne. He's six six. Um, he was a he was a great athlete. Got a football scholarship. He ends up um, getting injured. And I'm doing air quotes. And as we learn through uh, exposition from kind of an Alfred voiceover type thing. He was saving himself for Marriage. his Batmaning career. And so he, injury got him out of football and he ends up 
becoming, you know, learning about criminology and engineering, you know, he becomes an engineer and he goes to work for the city. I mean, all these different disciplines, uh, fighting disciplines and all kind of stuff. And this almost sounds like uh, a, the other, uh, like uh, Brian Bosworth from a, another universe. Instead of going pro, he went, he went, became Batman because he wasn't good as a, a pro athlete. <laughs> so he goes to work, he get, becomes an engineer and he knows every bit of the city. And so more about Bruce Wayne. Yes, he, he did have a parent killed essentially in front of him. And we're going to do spoilers. So it's the father who mm -hmm. is a teacher, not a doctor. The family's not wealthy. They're not poor. I mean, he's a teacher and his, you know, the mother, Martha's a social worker. Uh, and they, they says they live in crime, crime alley, but I mean, they're probably middle class people, but he's lived in the city. He's not rich. That bother you, Lauer? I'm not saying necessarily rich. that it bothers me, but just three things right there that to me was like he just went down a checklist of like things that we know about and be like, okay, let's make sure we change that. Ooh, let's make let's change that. Ooh, let's make sure we change that. Ooh, let's make sure we change that. And to me, it's like, well, you're just looking at trying to just change things, not focusing on like the story itself. And it's like changing just to change. That's what I was like picking up what? on like right away. Maybe. There's a little cynicism there, right? It, yeah. But but it's like, but that wasn't me trying to look for it. Yeah. It was just like, okay, from the get-go, okay, he's a teacher instead of a, okay, the dad died, but the mom's still alive. Okay, they don't have money. Da, da, da. Oh, he's at, we'll get to this, Crocs gym, and then names mentioned in that. It was starting to feel, like, to me, eye -rolling you feel like it is. You feel like it's contrived. Yeah. Instead of and, brainstorming and that, ideas, I mean, yeah, I would I, you know, play devil's advocate. They could argue, okay, it's going to be fine. Bruce Wayne. Okay, what mm -hmm. makes him Batman? We're going to keep. He's going to be a a expert in all these different disciplines, and I think that's what they change criminology what and makes him Batman. Everything. I, I would say that he that that's what I told I told Ryan. That after I read, I was skeptical going in. And then I read, it, I said at, at the bottom line at the end of the day, it was, he was very much Batman. Uh, I, I, you know. I agree and I disagree. Uh, I think that this could very well be Terry McGinnis. That's how far away it is from Bruce Wayne. Um, it's just some guy in uh, dressed as Batman. Um, in my opinion, it's just, it's not, it's not. I hate to be like that that loser who was like, that's not the Riddler, you know, for the Batman. But like to me, this is so detached from what makes Batman Batman. I think the motivation of losing Martha is a huge factor in Batman. I mean, since year one, the pearls dropping have been such an influence on Bruce Wayne and what he does. That's true. And not having that, I think, is a huge disservice not only to the character but to the fans. So fathers uh, aren't our fathers that parents aren't aren't worthy. It's it's tough when you when you make the statement for eighty five <laughs> years that losing both parents is an essential part to the fundamentals of this character, and then Scott Snyder comes along and just says, ah, "You only need one." You know, like the the the, the we 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 as readers have been so accustomed to putting Thomas Wayne on a pedestal, but it's always been the loss of Martha Wayne that seems to really motivate Bruce Wayne to. Uh, to for his 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 uh, career and well, uh, justice. I mean, like I said, like we've never you can't go a movie without seeing the pearls drop. It's hard to actually uh, motivate Batman without the loss of his mother because he always goes back to that one scene. Uh, I just I, I don't care how you know. I know lo losing a parent can be tough for anyone, especially in the way it seems that this particular Batman lost his. But having mom around there, sitting around, waiting for him to come home after lunch is is a weird thing. It's not something I actually do enjoy. Well, I would argue that in Batman Begins, Thomas Wayne had a big, big influence on that young Bruce Wayne because it was all, he had way more interaction with Bruce than his mother did in that film. He did, but again, the pearls and Martha, that was a big part of it. Like losing a mother, I think, is uh, especially for a son, is very difficult. Um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I, I, I'm like half 
so it's interesting because there's like a half agreeing with Pete and what he said, and then half agreeing with you, Bill. And the part agreeing with you, Bill, is the fact I actually I do think that there's there's core Batman here in the um the physical um elements and then also of the the backstory of his learning, you know, the different the studies that he did. Mm-hmm. Like that to me felt totally like, oh yeah, that's core that's core Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm with Pete though, also in in the fact of like the pearl element is so I think just like permanent in our brains as Batman fans. And there is I'd I'd lean more focus on his now, see, I don't know. I almost I, pick your story if he leans more towards, you know, his mother or uh, father. But th- to me, always, it's like the story of Bruce Wayne becoming Batman is because is the like his parents are one percenters in Gotham taken out by people that they're trying to help. And Batman, it goes to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And that's the story that works the best, I think, for Batman's core. And then stripping away some of these other men, other elements is just you said contrived earlier. And I like, yes, some of my cynicism in reading it, I, I agree that I had that and it was evident, but uh I I'm I kind of lost where I was going with with those points. Um half get, in and get, half I get out. you. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it just doesn't seem any difference from Terry McGinnis's Elseworlds. There we go. I'm like, I'm almost like, just call this an Elseworlds story, but they latched onto too much of Gotham now contemporary well, that it can't be Elseworlds. But otherwise, these say, other parts, like you should call it an Elseworlds story. Hey, y'all. It's Bill Ramey, founder of Batman on Film. Let's take a quick pause in this podcast for these words from our sponsor. Him becoming Batman is more this for this version. It's more than just well, his father. To me, it was like they were at the zoo, right, on a field mm-hmm. trip, and there was a mass shooting mm-hmm. took place because you know the, done, the dad <clears throat> dad weird takes to say the done kids, well, locks, lo- done locks them up. Yeah, and I think says, it's done very effectively. Don't, don't like open, it's... don't open this door. Period. Yeah. You know? And I think it's he. I think he grows up in an area and sees he's around crime. He's around people um, being taken advantage of, whether it be by the 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 people with money or just by the criminal element that he lives around. And so I think it's a common. It's it's different than. Him being, yeah, one percenter, a rich kid with a silver spoon in his mouth, and the, you know, he just does it because he's out for, re, you know, he's out for revenge or vengeance, and or to make sure it doesn't happen again to anyone else. I think that part is also there's a little bit. Of, there is some of that. There's, I, I, this is bullshit. It's crime is bullshit, and I'm going to do something about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do something there, about. There it. is that, but to me, it just it doesn't feel honestly like Bruce Wayne. It just doesn't. Uh, it's so it actually it, kind of feels similar yeah. to what we've gotten in, in regular continuity. I mean, they they just took all Bruce Wayne's money and put him in a brownstone. <laughs> like he's been doing that for like four years. So again, this isn't very different from what I've been reading uh, previously. Um, I don't think it's that new and fresh. To be honest, I feel like I've seen this origin story before. I keep bringing up Terry McGinnis. Uh, the only difference is that this Batman is bulky and he can't fly. Uh, there, well, yeah, he's. I, I don't see anything new. There's nothing new about Terry this. McGinnis. The only thing new about this is that it was all created by Dark Side, but I'm not sure if anyone knows that because uh, who read all in the special, you know? Because that's Bill and I did. Is. Before you jumped on, we were just you know? raving about how much we loved it. I mean, we're post absolute <laughs> power, and after all in, which essentially means uh, they're cut off from the multiverse and they can't go anywhere, and they're stuck between this and the absolute, which is a stupid name, uh, the absolute verse. So you know. That's that's about as new as it gets for. I I, I told Lauer I don't care about any of the other stuff. I'm just I read this as just as Batman's story. I don't care 
how it came about, where it is, who can access it or why, it, why it's there. It's just absolute Batman. So I'll, 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 I'll just, I, I, I would it should I be dark sides, Batman. I got, <laughs> I got to see it. I did. Only reason I read that because I had access to it, and I did made it made no sense to me whatsoever, and I didn't need to read that to to understand anything in Absolute Batman Number One at all. Mm-hmm. And oh, really, I mean, you, it shows it, you where the character comes from I, and where I don't, I don't care. Where its origins are. I don't care. I don't. I don't care. They came from dark. I, I. I. I get enough. I understand where this Bruce Wayne came from who he is, what he was just from reading absolute Batman number one. So I would disagree with the bat, with the Batman beyond thing, Terry McGinnis. I mean, he didn't, I mean, Terry McGinnis steals the bat suit and becomes kind of a conduit, a conduit of Bruce Wayne's Batman in a way. And, and this guy's still I, I, just, off its tech. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't see, I mean, he's, he's made all this stuff. He's created this. He's, He's got bat caves. They're not called that in the city and in, in, in buildings. He knows that will never be occupied because he's, he knows every nook and cranny of the city as a city engineer. He's made the bat suit. Uh, he's the, the everything. I mean, he's created except all for the this. motorcycle. He stole that. He stole it from Alfred. Let's speak it yeah. Alfred. Okay. There oh, we go. Well, I, ooh, that's rough. He, first is, of all, he looks like Ra's al Ghul. <laughs> he did. I agree with that. I was like, oh, he looks he looks a little yeah. like Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. So let's be serious. Alfred, the pronunciation uh, of that woman in Begins had it right. It's Ra's al Ghul. <laughs> yeah, <it's> Ra's al- <laughs> um, He is. It was hard. I mean, there's some ambiguous. Uh, it's ambiguous to exactly who he works for. Unless I just missed it this was almost my biggest connection when hots told me earth one is i think earth one to me earth one began this path that alfred's been on so we're talking over a decade now where he has a a, you know before he alfred has a a past in the uh in theater and now, like Earth One started, like what special ops, something or other. It's always a little yeah. ambiguous, but he has some kind of past in that. Was it Earth and One so, or Beware the Batman? <clears throat> Earth One was before Beware the Batman. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Um, and Earth One was also before Pete's uh, Gotham TV show. And like, okay, so they introduced this Alfred in here, where instantly I thought, like, that of Earth One, okay, we kind of know this, and they're like, but. But then this is where Bill, like my my cynicism comes in and they're like, but let's have him go after Batman. Yeah, that'd be cool and different. Like he's not an ally from the get go. So you're already taking Alfred because even in Earth One, Alfred has a history with Thomas Wayne. So it's like he at least is, has a history with Bruce's parents. So now instead of it being Alfred, it could be some guy named uh, Doll Steve that comes in. Steve uh, Frank comes in. Yeah. It, rather than Alfred, you know, it doesn't matter that his name's Alfred. And when that, when that happens with something, that's like that, that to me is like, well, then you could just make it any name. That's you how know? I feel it's, Bruce Wayne. And that's where I feel like this of, uh, this is an example of like, this is something different. He doesn't have a butler. He's got a guy coming after him and they're going to clash. And that's Alfred. I'm like, well, that's <laughs> I like Alfred being an ally with Bruce, being the the step in father figure. And it's like, and somebody can tell me, well, there's four issues left in this. Maybe he's going to get there. And I'm like, that's true. Let, let a story unfold. That's valid. Let a story unfold. But to me, it's kind of like, it's another example of you stripped away something that we like with Batman. How is that a good selling point? And well, then how does that fresh? This is better than Alfred being it? dead. This is this is so badass, you know, sort of deal. And that's just where I my don't, mind went with I don't, that too. I just I don't I never got the look how badass we are. I never got that. So I guess how, I don't have not that. every page. Hanging, I just I don't get I didn't get that. No, he's like, look at me, I've got an axe and spikes on my shoulders. Come mess with me. I never well, well, I knew I knew that, we were getting there yeah. with that, and that was one of my examples too. <laughs> uh, it's it's it's, just, it's it's so nauseating. Everything about this line is honestly just trying too hard. 
let's we could start off with the name absolute universe because that's a joke in itself because we as dc absolute means something you know the absolute format is a gigantic book it costs a lot of money this book isn't being published in that format so the name's already stupid to begin with so strike one on them and then i just feel like this is dc saying oh my god batman and detective numbers have been slumping what can we do i've got an idea let's bring back Loeb and snyder and then all the fanboys will get excited then we could relive the past I think Loeb has still got it. I think Snyder's days have <laughs> ended with Endgame. Um, if you want to read good Scott Snyder, read Noctera, because this is not it. I'm telling you, this is this is hardly Batman, much less Skyler Snyder's uh, you know, golden I days of I don't of see how I, I don't. And I'm I know it's just it's my opinion versus y'all's opinion or your opinion. I don't see how you, this is at the that's what got me. It's at the core. This is Batman. Alfred is it is he's not in Gotham to get Bruce. He's after that gang, the what they call the the party animals. He's yeah. some kind of covert spy hitman uh, operative, you know, black mm-hmm. ops, whatever you want to call it. He's in Gotham. He's been to Gotham before because he's at the you know the beginning. He goes, I, "Something's mm-hmm. different." I've you've, missed you, Gotham. You've, you know, you lost your soul, et cetera, et cetera. And which the actually would have meant more if it was from Bruce Wayne. The reason why he has to engage Batman and possibly take him out is because Batman is there. Interferes. Interferes with his operation, even though it's kind of the same thing, right? I mean, he's Batman's there trying to take out that, that gang as well because they're wrecking, they're just terrorizing Gotham completely, you know? And, you know, and for me, that's just. Well, first of all, I I did tell uh, Pete that this would be an interesting discussion because because I think we've got each basis covered here. Of Bill really liked it, he yeah. didn't like it, and yeah. I'm stuck yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Um, but this everything we're describing with Alfred, though, it's like that's a big part for me of like I'm not interested. I'm not interested in this. It, Batman's yeah. getting in the way, and he is he, a lot of times. I mean, you look at. Uh, pilot episodes of tv shows there's always someone that is the you know almost like the fish out of water we are they are us introducing us into this world and that's what alfred is in this comic that's his his use is we're getting caught up through him describing gotham describing the history of finding out this bruce wayne and all that stuff um but just it's it's through alfred's eyes exactly and and it's like okay so he's kind of ex he's there for exposition um mm-hmm. and then the conflict with batman i i, I don't eh, i don't know like i'm detached and it's supposed to be like well that's supposed to be crucial to jump on this on this story yeah. then it's like you should be I, with attached with alfred and and i'm like but i just i don't think i care i Especially like when it's one alfred issue been dead for so long in main continuity this is what they give me like this is trash i don't i don't i i separate the two you know what i'm saying um yeah it's, it's i enjoyed B- batman first time we really batman see him batmanning and he's taking mm-hmm. on that gang I, I i i um you know the cape makes sense or whatever it is you know cape slash <laughs> hooks i i you know you uh, see the bat walk on it on you know, it's you know they kind of set that up at the zoo I, yeah and uh I don't like the stuff to did with the cape. I didn't. I thought that was too, too much. Um, I I liked the action scene of him kicking ass, and I liked the mm-hmm. was it Officer Barbara Gordon, and mm-hmm. Batman is upside down and tells her don't come out. That was a good like, scene. Whatever. I thought that was cool. That also yeah. obviously made you think of that scene that Thomas said to little Bruce, you know, in the flashback. Uh, no matter what you hear, don't mm-hmm. come out. I thought that was cool. The action stuff, what he did with the cape walking on, I kind of o- rolled my eyes because it's like, hey, remember when we showed you that panel at the zoo earlier? Look at this. He's walking yeah. like a bat. He's hanging upside down and they're shooting at him. And it's like, we've seen him hang upside down before. But I think this is another moment where we're supposed to be like, oh, cool. He's hanging upside down like a bat. And that's a, hey. and then what he does with the signal, uh, you know, so, okay, we just saw it in the Batman freaking adored the fact that he that he that the bat symbol in his chest comes out and he uses that at a knife and puts it back in it makes the sound and everything Haas and i both are just gushing in the theater at that 
So this too, I'm not against the fact that he uses that as a tool. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. And he pulls it out. I already don't like the symbol, but I'm like, okay, what's he going to do here? Okay, you've got a sharp weapon. Look at now I've got a sharp weapon. But I'm going to cut your hand off. I, and I'm okay. like, oh, God damn it. I, Come on. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. And I did. And I yeah. liked it. It was very Batman. That was the most Zack Snyder moment I've ever seen in the comic book. <laughs> it you was. You've got, you know, you've got, a, you know, I, I hear you can, you, they can reattach those in about within 10 minutes. Yes. That's the, the way of covering hosp- it up. I get it. The nearest hospital is, is such and such, or is it the other way? But I mean, I, 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 I look, I am, I'm not gonna lie. I liked it. I mean, and I like only it. a Batman created by dark side would be able to do that. <laughs> Oops. See, in, yeah, in sure. my mind, I'm reading it is just it's a different world. I don't sure. Dark side. That's has fair. This, you know, you, I think there's more this. people. I think by what I've seen since people, there were early, you know, reviews of this, um, which most people aren't going to read it early and go online and shit on it. Uh, but like, I've since, been holding back <laughs> since it came out. <laughs> Of like I've seen more people like by a large margin, Bill, in your camp, and like yeah, oh yeah, Pete, Pete and I like are this. definitely in which I'm I'm even you know I'm the weirdo in the middle, caught in the middle. But it's just I've well, seen a lot I, more people yeah. in your camp of enjoying it. I oh, did sure. like also, um, you know, Alfred is intrigued by this Batman, and you know that's how we you know we find out more about Bruce. Yeah. Um, through him. And, you know, he's going to, at one point, you know, um, he, he knows what his weak spot is, he says, which is his mother that mm-hmm. Pete brought up earlier. Um, we know about his little operation bases throughout the city and how, and, um, you know, it's like, oh, you're, you know, you're good. You're prepared. You're, you know, you, um, and then that, confrontation between batman and alfred oh i gotta jump back i did also like the ears come off their daggers. i thought that was a cool idea i thought that was and, a cool idea and you know albert he goes he's stabbing him but he's doing it so precisely he knows exactly that it's their non-lethal stabs mm. and again i think okay that's, that's kind of bad it's very batmanish right there but the alfred batman i don't think i've ever seen batman stab anyone does he stab? Is he, is he really? Is he stabbed? I, I, not, not the stabbing, just knowing he kicks people's ass. And this that's is that's true. I mean, he's not opposed know, to breaking a bone. I'm, I'm, so, I'm wondering if yeah, he's I'm ever saying he, no, I don't, I don't think he's ever stabbed anybody. I'm saying he, yeah. he's just not stabbing him to kill him. He knows he is so goddamn yeah. smart. He knows exactly where he can puncture the, the guy in his body. And it's not going to, you know, it's not lethal at all. So, I, I like that, well, and I like, you know, the conversations the, between Alfred and Batman at the end. Well, since you just, you just brought up the stabbing, yeah. and then we'll get to the Alfred confrontation, but did, did you like, so I think I put a picture of it in the Facebook group um, when he became one of the road warriors for WWF back in the 90s, and he had the spikes on his shoulders and shit. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, I didn't like that. I thought that was dumb. This is like just, just to scare, yeah. just to scare good. people. In which hold on, I, I know what I just said. So just to scare people. Bottom. That's what Batman. Yeah. That's what Batman does. He, yeah, like fear. I understand. Right fear. there, you gotta go. But like, okay, but in, in this, it's just like, oh, you're not scared of me yet. Look at, I've got spikes, and then that's when they're all like, and run away. I thought that was dumb. I just thought that was dumb. Sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. I can't say there was any time I read this and rolled my eyes or yeah. thought it was. I just, I mean, I'm being honest. Oh, for me, it happened early dumb. on. First, and I, I am, moment. and I am the, ver- I am the most. Well, I don't know if I'm the most, but I am. Like I said to Ryan earlier, I'm pretty, you know, set yeah. in my ways when it comes to Batman, yeah. and I didn't expect oh, to enjoy this. And I enjoyed it because uh, if I had come, if I'd come out of this and not thought this is not Batman, it's core. Mm-hmm. This, this is just different to be different. And it doesn't have the DNA of Batman in it. Then I, I, I can't get on board, but I see Batman DNA in this all over. Sure. You know, and uh, <laughs> we've used the word term badass quite a bit. I did think, 
he was taking out Alfred and telling him, you know, you're not the only one that follows people. You're not the only one that investigates people. And taking his bike and then psh, shooting out I, the glass was pretty cool as well. The, I liked the, I did like their confrontation. And then of course we, I mean, anybody reading this knows, doesn't it, doesn't matter. This is a whole new universe, Batman or whatever of when he shoots Alfred in the face. It's like, okay, well there's a twist here. He didn't just blow his head off. Like, mm-hmm. And then you see what he did, and he shot little batterings at him. He reconfigured mm-hmm. Alfred's gun overnight, um, or not even overnight, like you know, in a less than a day. And I and then out he goes, and I, yeah, I thought that that was a good, like a good scene, good dialogue and stuff. And you know that they're headed to some sort of partnership. Yeah, 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 for sure. So. Um, Look, uh, I mean, epilogue, epilogue. Uh, yeah. Uh, What'd you think of the epilogue? I'd ra- I'd rather watch the the post credit scene to the Snyder cut. Like that's how I felt about the Joker in this. Don't, don't get am... don't get crazy, Peter. I'm not getting Did crazy. You don't I'm get crazy. You're, don't you, get. You, crazy. you made him into the hunchback <laughs> of Gotham. Like, give me a break. Who cares about this? To me, we don't again, know. It, it again, to change it. We don't know anything. You don't know. All they said is they cut. You know, he never lasts. They, no. You know, they, they call him the Joker. Yeah. Okay. Don't joke. Well, they, well, okay, there's another eye rolly part, though, too. Like, you know, it would be crazy if he's called the Joker, but he doesn't laugh. Yeah. Like, that's like, oh, goddamn, come on. Seven foot Batman's going to beat the shit at Quasimodo. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And and it's like, he's called, don't say jokes. He doesn't laugh. That's why we call him the Joker. And it's like, that, that, it's stupid. Like, it's that's eye Did you get the nod to uh, <laughs> Jack Napier and Arthur Fleck? How could I not? He threw it in my face. <laughs> I'm trying to think what, was, what was there was oh, no yeah, yeah, subtlety yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, no one funny. knows. His, but, you know, didn't bother know his name. We that don't know who's. I don't know who he is. You don't care. He could be Arthur. He could be Jack. Who for all that matters? To be honest, I, I it's not. That's not as bad for me as the worst eye roll moment is. Hey, let's. I called uh, Eddie, Ozzy, and. You know Harvey for yeah. beers after we you know, work out. You're gonna come, bro. Um, like they're that friends. The they're worst. friends. Yeah. They're gonna turn oh, into that's, enemies. So, okay, so <laughs> this is what we changed. All the Bruce Wayne's enemies were originally his friends, and then they're all gonna turn into bad guys. Here's what I sent. Right, it's the Leo DiCaprio gif no. from you, YouTube. Oh. <laughs> I I sense a very high level of cynicism going in because I you. You're, you're you're giving me examples of things I never thought about. Maybe I'm I, maybe I'm dumb. I don't know. I just never got the beaten. No, we're dumb. badass. We're badass. The, uh, Batman in awesome. general. I never. Has, I never. Yeah. Batman in print for two years minimum has been absolutely disgraceful to the point where they just. I think they've really just lost their way. Like I haven't read real Batman <laughs> in so long outside of like a couple black label books. It's 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 yeah. they've just been making one bad decision after another. It's it's like I took my car into the shop uh, for tires and they try to tell me I need a new transmission. No, I don't need a transmission. I need maybe a paint job and just four tires. You don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Just can you just make Batman Batman again? Like, what is yeah. all this? Stop and trying I, to change things. It's been around for 85 <laughs> years. Let's continue to make Batman. Pete and I do wrap up episodes every month and. Pete can tell you that I was hanging in there, Mr. Optimism, on the Batman title long after he was, mm-hmm. hoping that mm-hmm. like maybe this will be the one that I'll enjoy it. Maybe I'll enjoy it. And then I finally just got got over it. We were both pretty much over the detective run very early on with that. But like I wasn't I wouldn't have read this if I didn't want to like I don't read it just so I can try and fit in because that's what's cool and hip. It was like, okay, it's Scott Snyder. I'm not turned off by the images. Some of the stuff bugs me, but it's like, but I can get over that hump. Um, I won't disagree with you that there was some cynicism because I think they just, there's a lot of pounding over the head that this absolute Batman was coming. And then like I've mentioned multiple times here, like he doesn't have any money. He doesn't have a butler. He doesn't have a mansion. It's like, those shouldn't be your big points. Like it should be more about like a, a new, uh, a, a new, I don't know not an, even a new version of Batman, a new take on Batman, something like that more. So to, to sell me. So like I didn't read it negatively, but like I was aware that this was going to be a harder sell for me and I wasn't going to dive in with open eyes and happy thoughts and 
wide open arms. This is going to be great. I'm so excited for this. It was hesitantly reading it. And I'll continue. I wouldn't continue reading it if I thought like, if I don't like it, I, I, I don't do that. Um, there's enough do it good for here. That's right. Um, there's enough good here to keep me interested in where it's going to go next issue. What's going to happen next issue. Maybe there's going to be more to, or not, maybe there will be more to this Joker. Um, and we'll, then I can judge even more so than just like a little dumb dialogue to me of like, they call him something because he's not that something. I think that this universe will be fleshed out. This Batman world will be fleshed out more. Um, yeah. As we progress. I still, th- I still think, I don't think they're going to go, that things are going to morph into traditional Batman roles. I, you know, this Alfred's no, not going to be like Bruce happen. Wayne is not going to no. somehow get rich one day, and then and then this Alfred is going to be his his butler. That's not going to happen. Um, I don't know what the relationship is between Gordon and Batman. This Gordon was police commissioner at one time. Now he's the mayor. He's under fire. I don't think they all, have a relationship. The, 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 they may not yet. So, but yeah. it'll happen. I bet anything. Mm. I don't. You know, he's already helped Barbara. Um, Bu- uh, Bullock's the police commissioner. You know, uh, he seems to be really a staunch ally of Gordon. So, and who's under fire for all the violence and the crime in the city? I just uh, it all goes back to, for me is that I went in skeptical, not cynical, but skeptical, and I ended up when I said I thought the story was very good. And if it had not had been, if I had not come away with the idea of, okay, at the core, th- this Batman, it, that this is very, this is Batman at its core, then I would have said no. But that's, I, I felt the opposite. I felt like, yeah, at the very end of the day, it's, this is Batman. He was Batman. He's Batman for the reasons Batman's Batman. Now you can take all the peripheral stuff. You can take away, you know, um, uh, but it didn't change the fact that he's Batman for Batman reasons. If that makes any sense. So yeah, I'm on board. I'm reviewing it. So I would, it's not like uh Gotham by gaslight Kryptonian Justice age like where yeah. I'm where so I, glad you I'm, put, <laughs> where you put I in that just, review stuff. Me and Pete were saying, I think since issue two of that was like, this yeah. should have just been called justice league by gaslight. Yeah. But they hijacked the Batman name. Exactly. You know, that's something I went into excited and went, okay. And I'm staying, with, I'm going to review it because I you got seven I, more I'm months. On, Woo! I'm on, I'm on board. I said I was going to do seven this. more months you know, of that so thing. I'm not going to hand off 12 issues, but this oh, one is something I'm not, I'm looking even just, I'm not reading it just because I'm reviewing it. I'm looking forward to this next issue. I want to see where this goes. Sure. Um, and, you know, ultimately I may, it may be, Something I don't like, but issue mm-hmm. one was good and I liked it and I, I'm, I, I'm on board. So I am curious I as to where this Batman goes from here, because I imagine there's going to be an inev- inevitable showdown between this absolute Batman and main continuity Batman. There's I imagine oh, God, they're I building toward. Well, they're building towards something. They have to. I, the, the, of course they again, are. Like the whole point of Jesus. all this. Well, well, they have to. They have to sell comic books. Um, the whole point of All In was to basically reintroduce this universe and Darkseid's image and build towards some sort of event. Uh, that's th- that's what I'm really uh, kind of interested in more than actually watching uh, this, you know, this take on Batman uh, do that. I want to see, because I'm not going to read the other stuff. The the Wonder Woman uh, who it doesn't live on Paradise, Paradise Island and born from hell and then the Superman without a family. Like, I just, I was like, you know what? I read Absolute Batman. I was like, if, if these things are that much different, <laughs> I, it just doesn't yeah. seem like my thing. Like, you're changing what I really love about these characters. And uh, I, to me, you know, I'm not much of an Elseworlds guy. It takes a lot for me to get into Elseworlds stuff. Uh, this is what this kind of feels like. And I'm just, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I'm more interested yeah. in what they do with Dark Side than what they actually do with Batman. S- somewhere there, DC's more, they were more interested in doing this like a, a different take on Batman than re, than bringing us cl- like a classic Batman that we know, you know? And I, and I think if eventually they, at least by 
this week, I'm sure they'll think they made the right decision because, you know, I, like, as I said early on, Bill, like awareness is half the how battle. Are, I, I don't know. Anybody how, reading comics is very aware. How are the I think reviews? that this issue probably did. The reviews are great. Like across the okay. board, the reviews are all really good. I imagine it sold like wildfire. <laughs> yeah. So like, okay. They brought back a really big successful writer. Um, who's, he's been really good on, you know, just, uh, promoting this thing out the wazoo. So I think they probably think like we did the right thing. We brought this back, this Batman. And for me, I'm kind of like, you know, but they'd rather have done this than the classic Batman returning to that, that we know. Cause the, the timeline of the legacy titles, I guess we'll see what Tom Taylor does for detective, but those aren't going back to Alfred mansion, Bruce mansion. Thank God we've got the the last Halloween because that's at least returning us to classic Batman that we know. But I mean that's yeah. for ten months, ten issues I, only. I, I think we they they we can still find classic Batman in DC. We have to look hard they for do it. Black labels, black labels. Sco- yes, Scooby Doo Batman Mysteries has it every month, standalone issue. That's classic Batman. Mm-hmm. So that's good. And then when it, when Loeb and Lee return and do uh, Hush Part Two. You know, we'll get more of that. Loeb still has it. I mean, with those long Halloween specials, he just came in and just fit in like a glass slipper. Uh, I think Snyder, uh, you know, it's really Endgame was the last hurrah for me because uh, the robot Gordon thing was horrible. And then everything after with Dark Knight's Metal and Last Night on Earth was just embarrassingly bad, in my opinion. And he's I think there's this is actually surprising me because I've heard Snyder multiple times say, Writing Batman is very difficult because I have to. There's 85 years of history. The fan base is insane. It's there's a lot of pressure. Blah blah. I'm actually surprised he came back to do this until I found out how different it was from traditional Batman. Because then he's kind of like, well, I kind of have free reign to create my own version of Batman in a sense, and that's kind of what this is. It's just, you know, yeah. it, it, there's no to me like the the I compare it to Terry McGinnis because that's just how I feel. Like it just. Just it could be any character. It could be his name could be Steve Dave, and he you know it's just it's just a Steve guy Dave. with with, uh, with some <laughs> training and some muscle, and he became Batman. And uh, you know, I just I don't know. I think this really just lacks the motivations for me. It's interesting because that the metal and Dark Knight's metal and heavy metal, all that metal. Um, it's almost like that Batman carries with him the history, the classic Batman that we know, but it was in stories that I just didn't really care for. Yeah. And so therefore it's like, well, I'd rather this Batman than reading even just after one issue. I'd rather this Batman than than that stuff. Because that just definitely wasn't for me. I'm with you. I long way um, from Denny O'Neill. So <laughs> Pete, are you you're not reviewing it? So are you reading any more? Are you done? About I will read this for Lauer's uh oh, Batman. That's book right. Club. That's right. That's, that's right. It, okay. That's, that's right. I got what you. a friend. Okay. What a friend. And Ryan, you are <clears throat> intrigued enough. Yes, despite, I'll despite, say. Be, so despite all that cynicism, <laughs> mm-hmm. you're yeah. intrigued enough to continue on, even yeah, because if you it's, it's, even if you weren't doing the Batman Book Club recap, di- because of the disclaimer at the beginning too of uh, yes, despite my my criticisms and my hesitancies and stuff, is like I I I would argue that it probably is a it's a pretty good issue it's written well it's constructed well the art is good it's just like for me as a batman fan reading this it's like there's a lot of off-putting things in this i'll say bof perks um definitely is probably the motivator on why i'd continue um you know like I'll, i'll leave it at that and yeah like for it's enough that i'd yeah i'll keep exploring it um, I'll keep following along and, and we'll see where I'm at at the end of these five issues. Like I said, don't know if it's the end of the arc or the end of this absolute Batman after five. Don't know. Yeah. I can't imagine it's only going to be five issues. I feel like they have a whole grand scheme plan for these three characters in this universe that mm-hmm. that'll build to probably something next summer. Hopefully Bill's that, all in. That will be, no, that will be, uh, something that, that you don't have to read to continue reading absolute batman if you like it because once you when they start venturing off and on these you know like this this last thing they had for you that's where you lose me i think this is going to do it for yeah. absolute batman number one uh, i wish it was it for absolute batman <laughs> so i don't know what's going on with the other the two legacy titles so i read batman i it was okay this first one but yeah 
I don't, I don't like, like this, what it's hinting at at the end. This new costume, Avenger, good dude. Yeah, it seemed dorky. Fake. And then yeah. it teased Whatever. something at the okay. end that I hope they're not going to right now. Eh, anything, you two, <laughs> anything you two want to mention that you got going on, either at Batman on film or your, your own endeavors, go ahead. I am trying to gather the masses for a Joker 2 review show. And uh, I think it's going to be quite special because I, I found some people who actually enjoyed the film. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Which uh, apparently there aren't any. <laughs> so I'm going to try to get that. <laughs> there are a few. Yeah. So uh, that's basically what I'm trying to do. But uh, and uh, whatever Tom Taylor has in store at the end of the month with Detective, we'll see. Uh, we'll see that because yeah. that, that book has to rebound, in my yep. opinion. Uh, yeah. Mr. Did not uh, hold up his end of the bargain there. All eyes are on him, but like he doesn't have to do much to get us on board. No, he more literally detectives been for two years. <laughs> put Batman in a bat suit and get rid of anybody with more than two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, there yeah. you go, Ryan. Oh, uh, let's see. For me, yes. Um, most recent episode of the Batman Book Club, my podcast. It's on Batman on Film and wherever you listen to podcasts. It's got Pete's buddy Andy Luca because he's never read. Batman year one before, so I wanted to talk to somebody that was who's good. never read that it. That was good. That was uh, that was interesting. Good. I, I hope it accomplished what I was setting out for, of picking someone who doesn't read comics. He admittedly, it wasn't a humiliation um, episode or anything. He said doesn't read much comic books. And I'm like, take this classic story, put it through a 2024 lens from like a general audience member. You know, how does it hold up? It was a good discussion. It was fun. Um, I'm also going to have oof, maybe today or tomorrow another episode talking about year one with an artist on the recently released artists edition um, and see like why would this be created? What do people get out of this? Who's it for? That was a fun discussion as well. Um, so that'll be coming soon. Awesome. That makes me want to resurrect my old idea of uh, announcer Rachel Reed's comics. You should do it. Yeah. Maybe I will. All right. For me, yeah. Batman on film. Batman-on-film.com. Uh, we'll say we are various members. Me and Pete have done them, but everyone's welcome. Are uh, breaking down each episode of The Penguin. Uh, following each episode and on a podcast. And uh, one got one show left. And we'll have season one of uh, Batman Cake Crusader covered. We'll do episode 10 on right. the Batman, next Batman, Batman animation. Damn, I there you practiced go. that so much. You had I was it. so good at You've it, You've been man. doing so good lately. Batman animation, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, that's it. Now so Rachel, finish up here. We'll catch you next time. You have been listening to the BOF Social Hour, Jet's official podcast on Batman on Film. Follow BOF on threads at the Batman on Film. Follow BOF on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Batman on Film. To help keep BOF up and running, go to patreon.com slash batmanonfilm, or you can buy BOF a beer at buymeacoffee.com slash therealbatmanonfilm. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original, Batman on Film, founded in 1998.